good old fashioned cable guy facts that you can just know. One is uh, low frequency is your long distance runner and high frequency is your hurdler. And so that's just the nature of frequencies. So let's uh, take that and give you another example. How about uh, cordless phones? There's a bunch of different cordless phones out there. And I remember the first ones were 900 megahertz. Do you remember those? Uh, then after that, there came what I think it was 2.4 gig was next. And then now they're up to 5.4 or 5.8 or something gig, right? Well, that gigahertz, that's a frequency, right? Gigahertz. So which phone do you think works over the greatest distance? The new 5.4? Cool ones or the old 900 megahertz? Old 900. <laughs> See, you didn't have to know hardly anything to know that, did you? You just figured that out in five minutes. We learned that. That now you know that the old school 900 megahertz phones would go two or three times further than the new ones. But now, what's high frequency? It's our hurdler. So, where would you want one of the new phones, the 5.4 megahertz ones? Where would you want that? At? Wherever you got a bunch of walls, cement, things you got to get around, right? If you live in an apartment complex and you want to go around walls and things like that. If you're on a farm, you want a 900 megahertz phone, something like that. So that's just the nature of frequencies. And we're gonna, we'll come back to that here in a minute. Um, let's skip over to, to the channels themselves. These are typical TV channels like you would see on the spectrum. And our spectrum here goes from five megahertz to the return band, so I'll make it right here, 42 megahertz. And then when your TV channels start, it is at 55, and it goes to whatever your system is. What's your system here, 750? Sure. 750 megahertz, do you know? What's your highest channel? 107. 107? <laughs> What's the highest channel you check? 42. Well, okay, it's probably 750. It's probably 750 megahertz system, it's probably what it is. Okay. But all your systems are in this 550, 650, 750, 870, right? And then splitters usually go to a gig, they're usually five to one gig, you say other splitters and such. That means they'll pass those frequencies. But if you put anything higher than it, or ain't gonna pass it, like light or microwaves or anything like that. We won't go do that. So at any rate, uh, let's talk about this TV channel. The way they get this TV channel out there and the TV picks it up is called modulation. And what they do is they create this piece of electricity here, one for audio and one for video, and they either bounce it left and right or they bounce it up and down. If they bounced it left and right, they would be bouncing it according to what? Frequency. Frequency, right? And what did I say bouncing it's called just a second ago? Modulation. So, on your car radios, you have something called FM and you have something called AM. What do you think the FM stands for? That's correct. So if you learn something else, is it easy? So easy. All right. If you bounce the carrier up and down and bounce it according to amplitude, what do you think AM in your car stereo stands for? Amplitude modulation. That's just how they create that Morse code. So they bounce this carrier back and forth or up and down, and that creates ones and zeros that tell either the TV or your stereo or whoever's at the other end it's just Morse code is all it is. It tells the device at the other end, you know, what what it's supposed to transmit or put back out the other side. That's just its way of communicating. So, so that's how TV works. Uh, that's how radio works. That's how all transmission works. It's through modulation. Okay. And if you go to the cable head end at the cable office, you will see a big satellite dish where they bring in all the channels from uh, space on the satellites, and they bring them to a receiver. They take those receivers, come and take them to a modulator, pick the channel they want to modulate it on, 2 to 80, and then combine it with a bunch of splitters turned backwards on one piece of cable and amplify it out to the system. That's all it is. Uh, when you look at your off-air channels, here off-air, like uh, NBC, CBS, and Fox, they actually put an antenna up in the air, just like bunny ears, or just like I had when I was a kid on the side of my house. I had one that I would climb to get on the roof. But I had an antenna on the side of my house, and that picked up the NBC, CBS, and ABC for me. Well, that's what the local cable company does. They've got an antenna up there, and they pick up from the broadcaster, just like you used to, and they take that to a modulator and turn it to the channel they want and send it back out. Now, that's kind of important because here, I'll just ask you guys, what channels say NBC, for instance? Do you know? Or CBS? Or what's one you know? Seven. Okay, seven. What's that one? 
Seven. CBS. <laughs> 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 Okay, CBS Tape. Do you ever see ghosting on Channel 7? Yes. Okay, you know why you see that? Because it's too close to it. It's on the same frequency. It's on the same frequency, right? So they're transmitting it out from the broadcaster. The cable company is putting their antenna up in the air, and just like my mom and dad used to, or the guy next to where you're installing, he doesn't have cable, what he does. Well, then the cable company's picking it up, putting it out on the modulator, putting it out on the same channel, and then your TV, although it doesn't have bunny ears up to it, it's got the cable you put into it, it's still picking up the off-air broadcast. And, and which one gets there faster? The one from the broadcaster, because the cable company's got to bring it in and remodulate it and send it back out. So it's got about a second delay behind it, right, or half a second or whatever. So if you see ghosting on NBC, CBS, ABC, whatever, known as the broadcast channels, because they're just broadcasting out of which, that's that TV set. And that TV set is somehow not shielded properly, and it's letting you see those channels. In Indianapolis, oddly enough, where I'm from, they recently switched NBC from channel 13 to channel 12. So if you've got bunny ears, you pick it up on 13, but if you got cable, you pick it up on 12, because they were just tired of the ghosting. Channel 13 was blasting, you know, whatever, 50,000 megawatts of power, or whatever they say they got, and it was, you know, TVs were still picking it up. So, so there's a little something for you, right? If you see ghosting on TV, now you know something. No way to fix that? Basically like, yeah, yeah, put a bunch of aluminum foil around the TV or go I mean, get a new TV. Well, customers always say, well, why do we have ghosting? You know, we're like, why does it just start all of a sudden? So basically, it's trying to turn it into one big antenna. Well, the TV itself, the TV itself, the TV itself has two little wires that come out from the tuner and go to that barrel. And you plug, some, you plug your cable into there. Even though you plug your cable into there, that barrel and those wires aren't shielded for deadly. Same thing about when you go watch people, uh, whenever you go buy a new TV, they always try to sell you the monster cables and the gold cables. And that just cracks me up because if you could take the back off that TV and look at that barrel, it's got two skinny wires, you know, going to the tuner from there. And meanwhile, you're buying this $50 half inch thick monster cable, gold plated, and that's not your bottleneck, right? You can buy the crappiest cable they got, and it's still better than what's inside the TV from there. Okay, so that's not the bottleneck; it's what's inside the TV, and the cable's not being shielded. So, so the way you can prove it to the customer is if you unplug the cable, you should still see the ghosting. You should still see the picture, the one picture that was ghosted behind. If not, you could explain it to them, right? Yeah, you can straight to the digital box and tell them to go to that channel on the digital tier. So if there's a digital tier, <coughs> like like maybe they rebroadcast it out on seven three seven. seven. What is it? Seven, seven. Yeah, to go to that channel and you won't see it. Actually, one thousand seven. Yeah, right. Go to that channel and you won't see it, or you shouldn't see it. Even though the digital switch over, to me, if you unplug it, the TV it just gets that. Well, you should get a little bit of a picture, and and then now the other justification to that is it might not completely be the antenna, the cabling inside the TV. When you hook up your cable, it could be the cable plant has cracks, cracks in it. And wherever it has cracks, it's ingress. Or you get ingress. It's an antenna line perfect. Antenna line touch your cable, absolutely. Loop. There's tons of things. It can be squirrel shoes Loop. everywhere. You know, those are really bad. Loop spinnings? Yeah. Loop spinnings. Yeah. Peanut gallery. <laughs> So, so the reason I told you that was not just to tell you that we're going to actually going to take this a long ways, and I'm going to tell you uh, next that when you guys uh, install a box or a modem, there's a lot more than just today's world of just signal level. There's what's called signal integrity, and so there's three figures of merit, actually two, but three figures of merit to determine signal integrity, and I'm going to tell you what those are. Uh, First, I'll tell you this. If you were modulating this signal, and let's say that in the middle was nothing, null, over here was a zero and over here was a one. So if you bounce that way, you make a zero, and bounce that way, you make a one. Well, then for any moment in time, and I won't say a second, because we do things a lot faster than seconds. We do things in milliseconds in cable TV or in communications. So I'll say for any instant or any moment in time, any, any split second, I'll use that term, for any split second, you can either be over here or you can be over there. You can either be sending a zero or you can be sending 